हेलो स्टूडेंट्स सो दिस इज़ अनादर एपिसोड वेर वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट हिंदू कॉलोनाइजेशन इन साउथ ईस्ट एशिया सो वी हैव ऑलरेडी कवर्ड कम्बोडिया पार्ट वन दैट इज़ अनादर वीडियो यू कैन गो चेक द वीडियो बिफोर वॉचिंग दिस वन बिकॉज दैट विल बी अ कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ द प्रीवियस वन सो लेट्स मूव ऑन so you know in the previous video where we have discussed the initial phase of cambodian history the ancient cambodia and we have discussed that how funan kingdom uh, that emerged in ancient cambodia and after the decline of funan there was the subsequent rise of kambuja and in terms of kambuja we have you know uh, seen that jayavarman 2 he played an important role in the unification of kambuja move kingdom so that is basically in the part 1 video you can uh, go check it and then just come here to have a discussion of the later period that is after jayavarman 2 there there is jayavarman 3 uh, who ruled from 1854 to 1877 ad which is a you know very brief period of time and we do not know so much about jayavarman 3 because jayavarman 2 was more important and we have already covered that in part 1 in part 1 video so we are actually getting all these informations from arab chronicles that is yakubi and ibn roste these names are important if you are asked in a competitive exam that what are the sources from which we are knowing this cambodian history then you have to mention the names of these arab chronicles that yakubi Uh, and Ibn Rushdie, and they kind of came in 1875 A.D., 903 A.D., and they kind of explained the whole uh, Cambodian history, the description of various political organization, social condition. For example, Ibn Rushdie, he is saying that there were you know 80 judges in Khmer country, who were kind of fair and impartial in providing judgment. So. he was these arab chronicles were talking about a very you know advanced judicial system in ancient cambodia where the judges were very fair uh, in representation arab chronicles were also praising the abstinence from drinking and debauchery that how there was you know no practice of drinking in ancient cambodia and also how debauchery and adultery these things were discouraged but some of them i mean some of these arab chronicles they you know included this khmer region that is this kambuja and etc into indian subcontinent so when they were explaining the, the history of ancient cambodia that is kambuja kingdom etc they said that it was part of india but we actually know that it was not because the colonization kind of expanded uh, the hindu people or the buddhist people were actually Uh, going to this region and creating their own colony but it was not india uh, so but the arab chronicles they have mentioned that the khmer region was within the boundary of indian subcontinent it was their view actually so the next king that is after jayavarman 3 there came you know indravarman and he was remotely attached to royal line but his queen indra devi who was you know royal by birth and he kind of expanded uh his uh, kingdom that is indravarman into yunnan and also came into conflict with china and indravarman was a great builder so if you are asked that who built indra tataka and who built indra yana indra prasadaka so that is indravarman and it is also easier to remember because he named all these uh out of his own name so it is easy to remember and also he designed his own singhasana so he had a kind of you know urge to uh, urge towards architectural decoration and everything so that that is important that during the time of indravarmana there were several architectural you know flourishment that was happening in ancient cambodia so now to move further uh, after indravarman the next king was yashovarman he founded new capital called kambupuri which was later named as you know yashoda pura and yashoda pura is uh, you can actually uh, remember it because he named it after his own name this new capital was at the top of the hill called uh, nombakhen 
and many we are, we find many inscriptions in the reign of yashovarman he was a great scholar who wrote commentaries on patanjali mahabhashya so sorry this may be a mahabhashya so this is very important that if uh, we, we ask that who was the uh, kambuja king who kind of uh, wrote commentaries on patanjali's mahabhashya it would be yashovarman uh, in terms of religious affiliation, Yashovarman was a Saivist. He was the follower of Shiva, but he also patronized Buddhism and kind of excelled in both art of war. So, Yashovarman has been, you know, compared with Dharmapala of Pala dynasty in India. As you know that the Pal dynasty in ancient India was very famous. So, Dharmapal, his political achievement and, you know, uh, his... Uh, excellence has been compared with Yashovarman. So that, that can be also a question that uh, who is the Kambuja king who has been compared to Dharmapala? The answer would be Yashovarman. The next king is Rajendra Varman who came to throne in 1944 AD. He left a large number of records and you know successfully invaded Champa uh, and uh, reached Khanhua province. So that, that is very important. So we will see that how the invasion, I mean the political conflict with Champa, the kind of political battle that was happening between Champa and Kambuja that intensified during this period. That we have saw that how uh, Rajendra Varman, you know, invaded Champa. Now we will see that the next king who is Jaya Varman V, he also invaded Champa. So in terms of religion, uh, like his previous king, Jayavarman V was also a Shaivist, but he was also an ardent champion of Buddhism. So we can see that how during this period, the kings were actually, you know, patronizing both Buddhism and uh, kind of Shaivism at the same time. The next king was Suryavarman. He succeeded Jayavarman V in 1010 AD. He also adapted Buddhism. His inscription shows invocation to Buddha and Shiva as well. Uh, Surya Varman was called posthumously as Nirvanapada. This is important. If you are asked that uh, who was called Nirvanapada, it, the answer would be Surya Varman. So Nirvanapada is obviously related to Buddhist, uh, you know, philosophy because Nirvan, as you know, the term is related to uh, the salvation in Buddhist scripture. So uh, Surya Varman was also a great scholar who was, you know, versed in Vashya, Kavya, Sikh system of philosophy and Dharma Shastra. So he was very, uh, you know, uh, he kind of was well versed in all these different uh, Hindu scriptures and religious texts. Surya Varman was succeeded by Udayaditya Varman, who was crowned by his ministers as emperor. So it was said that, you know, he did not succeed or he did not inherit the throne, but he was kind of elected by his ministers as the emperor. So during Uda, Udayaditya Varman, there was also disastrous invasion by Cham Champa. So we can see that uh, during Jaya Varman, Udayaditya Varman, the political conflict with Champa, it kind of went on and on. And next there was king like Harsha Varman III. Uh, there was also unfortunate foreign invasion during the period of Harsha Varman III. Like he tried to help Chinese who were fighting against Annam Kingdom in Tonkin. Now this Annam Kingdom is very important because we will see that how uh, in uh, this uh, early uh, medieval period the Annam Kingdom that is was in you know Vietnam region present a Vietnam region, but at that time it was Tonkin. So this Annam kingdom would be very influential uh, after the decline of Kambuja. So that is a later history, but we will just focus on this part that how the Kambuja king that is Harsha Barman III, he was trying to help Chinese uh, because they were fighting against Annam, but the Chinese were actually defeated. So the help actually went in vain. And in uh, 1080 AD also, uh, they, I mean, Harsha Varman invaded Champa, but also failed in this time. And the, it kind of worsened the internal situation of Kambuja because so many, you know, foreign invasion during Harsha Varman III's reign and all of them were failed. 
also a rival king called Jayavarman VI, he started ruling from north of Cambodia. So a civil war was happening during the time of Harshavarman III. And all of the foreign invasion, the political invasion that Harshavarman initiated all kind of failed. So this was actually a very dark time for Cambodia. The next king was Shuryavarman. He made you know several expeditions to Champa and Andam but faced serious retreat. So there also he kind of uh, failed. But in spite of that, the north part of Champa was made a vassal state of Kambuja. So this is important that how uh, without many, uh, you know, drawbacks, uh, a slight a slice of Champa was the became becoming the vassal state of Kambuja and it was renamed as Vijaya Kingdom, right? But the southern part was never come conquered. I mean, the southern Champa, it was never conquered by Suryavarman. Suryavarman also sent embassies to China twice and uh, there are several records which says that how Suryavarman had two luck war elephants and Suryavarman too who was the next king to Suryavarman one he also you know made this Angkor Wat temple this is very important and if you go to any I mean Southeast Asian regions you will see that even today this Angkor Wat temple is a famous travel destination you know so Suryavarman II built this Angkor Wat temple, right? And uh, this Suryavarman II, he was initiated in Vraha Gujya. So this Vraha Gujya, this term means that, this means that the great secret. And this is basically a tantric cult. I mean the Shaivist tantric cult that this Suryavarman was following and it was by his guru Divakara Pandit who kind of performed sacrifices like Koti Homa, Laksha Homa, Maha Homa. And, uh, you know, so this is a time where, you know, the Saivis, the Tantric Shaivism, it was influential in uh, Kambuja. So after Surya Varman, you know, there came uh, Surya Varman too that I have already explained. I have kind of uh, mistakenly, you know, uh, written this uh, twice sorry for that so after Surya Varman 2 there is Jaya Varman 7 he ascended the throne in 1181 AD and in his reign Champa was captured so again uh, uh, another phase of political battle with Champa during Jaya Varman uh, 6 reign he uh, Jaya Varman also con conquered you know Pagan Pagan in Burma which is now called Bagan uh, Jayavarman 7 divided his kingdom into two parts and appointed his brother-in-law Surya Jayavarma Deva in north while the capital uh, as Vijay but soon a revolution in north was happening and in this revolution the chief who was called Rashupati he came in power but Jayavarman 7 sent an expedition and defeated Rashupati so this is just a an instant that how during the time of Jayavarman 7 there was another civil war that was happening and how Rashupati achieved he uh, kind of wanted to take power political power but with the timely intervention of Jayavarman 7 this civil war was subdued but it showed that how there was you know several political threat within the Kambuja kingdom so the king was not you know all powerful there were several chiefs uh, suddenly coming up you know, arising there with their political power and everything. After Jayavarman uh, 7, there is, uh, you know, oh, one thing is that Jayavarman 7 is very important because uh, not only uh, the invasion to Champa and invasion to Pagan, that is in Burma, but also he i mean jayavarman 7 he made royal donations and which what are these royal donations we kind of know this from the inscription called ta prom inscription this is very important and i have written extensively about this inscription so this jayavarman 7 inscription ta prom that can be you know a very important part in competitive exam so what this inscription is saying that this inscription is in the temple of Taprom. There is a particular temple where this inscription has been, you know, preserved. And the king installed an image of her mother, Progga Paramita. His mother name was Progga Paramita and in, uh, kind of image of her has been installed in this temple where the inscription is there. So every single detail of this, this 
temple is very important because we will see that how around this temple a whole kind of economic structure will develop like every single detail of the temple organization several villages were employed in the service of the temple can you imagine there were you know 3400 villages that was only there to serve the temple right scholars food daily necessities and all statistics have been recorded in this taprom inscriptions so how this one temple that is taprom temple but around this a whole village economy was you know structured and kind of it 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 was a very new uh, economical you know structure that was coming up the inscription also tells us about the, the there was also not only this taprom temple but 798 temples in the whole kingdom and 102 hospitals and over 1 lakh kharikas of rice uh, i mean uh, rice cultivation was happening and rice was donated annually so this you know this royal these are all kind of royal donations that how the king made this temple taprom temple and there was also inscription in that temple and from that we know that how he made jayavarman 7 that is how he uh, made this royal donations what is the royal donations that there was village uh, that 3400 villages who were kind of uh, employed for the service of this temple there were scholars priests uh, who were kind of uh, working in this temple there was food daily necessities uh, and all kind of you know hospitals and rice cultivation so a whole village system where everything is present there is also another inscription in the temple that is called prakhan and it also tells us about the establishment of 121 uh, vani grihas for the resi residential settlement of pilgrims what is vani grihas vani grihas is basically dharmashala where the pilgrims will reside you know many tourists will come many pilgrims will come who will reside in the temple of prakhan or in the temple of taprom but where will they kind of live that is in the vani grihas vani grihas mean dharmashalas or the pilgrim pilgrimage center so it also tells us about the number of dt's gold silver and bronze presents in the temples so this inscriptions are important you have to remember the name like taprom inscriptions or the inscription in uh, you know this prakhan region and how all these were talking about this temple organization the villages the rice cultivation economy etc so jayavarman 7 you know has a very uh, long political career and he did many things so you have to remember all this now jayavarman 7 also made the capital city of ankorthom this is also important Uh, an interesting reference is made to the queen of jayavarman 7 in the inscription so this is a little story you can remember if any question comes like jayavarman 7 he kind of you know went to champa and married a woman of champa right so when the king first went to champa she i mean she means the wife of jayavarman uh, seven she showed her conjugal fidelity by performing hard austerities then was initiated to buddhism and then he could marry i mean she could marry jayavarman seven so you know the uh, there was also long drawn wars with champa and we are seeing that how jayavarman seven is also marrying a woman in champa i mean the princess in champa region so but this you know the war with champa drained the country obviously and we will see that how there will be kind of uh, the annamites kingdom the annam kingdom that i have already uh, uh, kind of taught that how annam kingdom was uh, emerging as a in it was in vietnam and how it was emerging as an influential power during the early medieval period so we will see that how kambuja uh, it kind of went into oblivion because of the threat of thais on west and the annamites on east so we will see that how after the days of kambuja these two kingdom that is the thai kingdom and the annamites kingdom or the annam kingdom they will be influential influential in the history of southeast asia so now we will see that kublai khan he sent an envoy to champa and kambuja 
he also sent an uh, invoice to Burma as well. So uh, the Kublai, the arrival of Kublai Khan is very important, you know, in the, in the decline of Kambuja Empire. So he sent an invoice to Champa and Kambuja that, uh, to, you know, demanding their allegiance. So after a few years, I mean, after the few years when Kublai Khan came, there was Chuta Kunas. Uh, sorry, Chuta Kuans, and why he is important because he came as an emissary, but he gave a detailed description of the capital city of Kambuja. So, from the uh, description of Chu, we are actually getting the information that how uh, how was the days uh, of Kambuja in this uh, in this kind of uh, later phase. So, uh, Chu wrote a graphic account of the king, who was the contemporary king Srindra Varman. And there he narrated the family politics of the royal dynasty, you know, the conspiracies, consumption and opulence in the royal palaces. He uh, Chu also told about, you know, troops, military and the concubines. So he was giving a very detailed account of the political and so social situation of Kambuja, but when Kambuja was in decline. Chu also mentioned how because of the war with Siam, that is Siam is present at Thailand, the Angkor region has been devastated. So this is basically Chu uh, Tak once he, he was a foreigner, he was an emissary and he is, uh, because of his foreign account we came to know about this last phase of Kambuja empire. Uh, as part of conclusion, it has been said that in the media, as I have already said, that it was the Thais and the Annamites who would dominate the Southeast Asian political scene and we will see that how there is a decline of the Kambuja kingdom. And finally, in 1854, the mighty kingdom of Kambuja, that is Cambodia, became a mere protectorate of France. So this is in a very brief way. Uh, you know, uh, the history of Cambodia, ancient Cambodia, you just have to, you know, uh, kind of remember these names and what are their major dates. Not that you have to, you know, uh, remember all these dates and uh, years, you don't have to, but just, you know, uh, kind of uh, follow these red uh, letters. I have tried to, you know, red marked all the important uh, king's names, the inscriptions and etc. like this uh, Tapom inscription etc. So this is the thing. So if you have any question and feedback, please put that in comment. And also if you haven't seen the Cambodia part 1, please go through that first and then come to this because after that you will have a very uh, clear idea of the whole uh, history, whole Hindu colonization in Cambodia. So thank you very much.